Hello, welcome to lecture 11 of ELEC Eng 2 ci 5 In this video I will start discussing loop analysis which is a technique we use to determine the loop currents in a given circuit um, This approach is the dual of the nodal analysis we just finished So um, in, in the nodal analysis we are interested to find the node voltages and from the node voltages we can get the currents and voltages everywhere, everywhere else in the circuit so uh, we'll start today to discuss the case where you have only uh, voltage uh, sources and where you have current sources at the boundaries of the circuit. Not a current source is not shared by two loops. So uh, I will explain that, and then we in the next video we'll be discussing uh, the more uh, more on the special cases uh, that involves dependent current and voltage sources and uh, current sources in between two loops. Okay, so as I explained, loop analysis aims at solving the currents for each loop. You assign one, one current to each loop, and then you try to solve for it by applying KVL. We apply KVL to each, to each loop. In nodal analysis, we apply KCL at each node. In, uh, in loop analysis, we apply KVL to each loop or to each mesh. Um, in this, they have here this, loop, this expression here that you have B branches in a circuit. And you have n nodes. You can get b minus n plus one linearly independent KVL equations, and you can solve them for the unknown currents. This this number is good uh, for theoretical purposes, but in reality, it's it's a little bit difficult to uh, to apply in a given example. What we care about in a given example is that you select a sufficient number of loop currents to cover all the loops. So all the branches are covered with some current flowing in them. Okay, I will show you the meaning of this in a second. But this this uh, this uh, this limit does hold. If you have b branches, if you have n nodes, you can be you can get b minus n plus one linearly independent KVL equations. Let's take example this example here as a as a as a tool to illustrate the idea. We have here this circuit, a number of resistors, we have only one, one volt source, and we'd like to determine the current I flowing in the 10 ohm uh, resistor here, the, the current drawn from the source. Okay, so um, we have, we have a quite large number of loops in this circuit. This is one loop, this is the second loop, this is the third loop, this is the fourth loop, this is the fifth loop. Uh, you can, so it's it's large number of loops. Uh, but not all of them are linearly independent, so each one of them is not going to give us one independent equation. So if you take a look at this circuit, you will see that you have one, two, three, four nodes. And if you count the number of branches, one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six branches and you have four nodes. And if you apply the limit I mentioned earlier, the number of independent KVL equations is 6 minus 4 plus 1 is equal to 3. So what's happening here, we are going to select three loops and we get, give each one of them its own current. So the current flowing in this loop, I'm going to call it I1. The current flowing in this loop, I'm going to call it I2. The current flowing in this loop here, I'm going to call it I3. So this is I3 flowing in this loop. This is I2 flowing in this loop. This I1 flowing in this loop. And notice the wires are not intersecting here, okay? This is this is very, a little bit unusual for circuits, but this is one, it's a possibility, okay? Notice when you made this selection, the following. The current flowing in the 30 ohm resistor is actually I1 plus I2, because this branch is shared by this loop and by this loop. So the current flowing in this in this branch here in 30 ohm resistor from top to bottom is I1 plus I2. Also, notice that the current flowing in this 10 ohm resistor here is equal to I2, this I2, which is the current associ uh, associated with loop number 2, and the current I3. I3 also flows here. So this is a joint branch between loop 2 and loop 3. Okay? So it's very important to understand that in this 10 ohm you have only I3 in in uh, in uh, this 10 ohm here you have only I1 flowing from left to right 
but in this branch and in this branch you have joined you have this is these two these two branches are joined by are joint branches between two loops then you, the current flowing here is i1 plus i2 i1 is here and i2 is here this is a joint branch and the current flowing here is i3 plus i2 okay the current flowing in this branch is only i2 the current flowing in this branch actually here in this one as well you can get uh, you can get i i1 and you have also um, i3 here so this is also a joint branch between i1 and i3 so this current would be i3 minus i1 the loop method tries to solve for the currents i1 i2 and i3 after we associated each loop with a current and we know that the currents flowing in the in the joint branches they are going to be plus or minus between the currents we assumed we start to write kvl for each loop so we go around we're going to take first loop number three to so this loop here okay we can simply say that this voltage source must be equal to the sum of all the voltage drops happening across happening across the circuit so you can simply or you can apply kvl really it's exactly the same so you can simply say that 10 minus this drop which is 10 i3 this is only i3 minus this drop which is 50 multiplying i3 minus i1 so the current here is i3 minus i1 minus this drop which is equal to uh, 10 multiplying i2 plus i3 is equal to zero this is the equation i have here I just moved all the i terms to the other side. So this 10 would be equal to this drop plus this drop plus this drop. And you should notice one very important thing. When I, I use these drops, I, I, I assume you have this polarity here. Plus, minus, plus, minus, and plus, minus. Okay? So this polarity means that I'm multiplying really by I3 here. And here is going to be the current flowing will be I3 minus I1. And the current flowing here in this one from right to left is I3 plus I2 because I2 is also flowing in the same direction. So this is the expression that you have. 10 volts is equal to 10 I3 plus, 10 plus this resistance here which is 50 multiplying I3 minus I1 plus this one is 10 ohm multiplying I3 minus I2, I3 plus I2. In this branch, I3 and I2 flow in the same direction, so you add them. While in this branch, I3 and I1 flow in the opposite direction, so you subtract them. Okay? So you put all this together, you obtain this equation, collect all the coefficients of I1, you have here minus 50 I1, all the coefficients of I2, and you have to do it in order, in the same way, in the same way that, that we did for nodal analysis. 10 I2, you get I2 here, coefficient of I2. And then I3, you have 10 I3, 50 I3, 10 I3, so you have 70 I3. This all is equal to 10. You can divide by 10. You obtain this expression, uh, this equation here, minus 5 I1 plus I2 plus 7 I3 is equal to 1. This is the first equation. We need two more equations to be able to solve for the three unknowns we have. So let's take loop number 2. This loop number 2 here, we have to go around this loop and sum all the drops in one direction to be equal to 0. Okay? So this one here is 10, this is 10 ohm, multiplying I2 plus I3. So I have this one here, okay? Now let's go talk about this one here. Again, you, ha you have to sum the drops in the same direction. So I can simply uh, help, you, help you see it. So I'm going to go around plus minus, and then plus minus, and then plus minus, okay? So I'm, I'm summing the drops here, plus this one, plus this one. This one is 10 multiplying I2 plus I3. This is the one I have here. This one here, this is 50 ohm, and the only I2 is flowing here. Plus, minus, so plus 50 I2. I'm summing the drops, okay? As long as I go plus, minus, I'm going to give them the same sign. Here, I, this is 30 ohm. The current flowing from top to bottom is I2 and the current flowing in this other loop here is i1 so this is the shared link a shared branch between loop 2 
and loop 1. So this is 30 I1 plus I2. So this is the expression that I have. The sum of all these three drops will be equal to 0. This is a, a loop, but it does not have a source. So the sum of all the drops in one direction must be equal to 0. If you collect all the coefficients multiplying I1, you get 30 I1, 50, 30, and 10. So you get 90 I2. And then you have 10 I3 is equal to 0. You divide by 10, you get this expression. 3I1 plus 9I2 plus I3 is equal to 0. The last equation, you get it by applying KVL to loop number 3. And again, we will assume that the direction of uh, the, the, third, uh, the third current, or uh, sorry, it's loop number 1, it's loop number 3. We already did 3. We did 3, 2, and 1. So this is 1 here. This is loop number 1. So I'm going to, again, sum the drops in the direction of I1 plus minus plus minus plus minus okay so i1 is flowing this way and it's causing the drop so the sum of all these drops in one direction must be equal to zero this is kvl so this drop here you have 30 ohm the current here is i1 plus i2 so 30 i1 plus i2 i have this one here let's take a let's take a look at this branch okay this branch is 50 plus minus, so 50 I1 minus I3. Remember, this branch is shared between I1 and the I3, and the two currents are follow, fo flowing opposite to one another. So this is going to be 50 I1 minus I3. This one here, okay, so we did, we, did, uh, we did this 30 here. We did this 50. In this 10 ohm, you have only uh, I3 flowing. It's only I3. So, plus uh, so it's I1 flowing. Pardon me. So, this is 10 I1. So, remember this loop number 1. So, this is 10 I1. This is 30 multiplying I1 plus I2. And this one here is 50 I1 minus I3. This is what I have here. These are the three contributions I have. If you sum them together in order, so this is 10, 30, and 50 will give you 90. This is 30. We give 30 I2. And then you get minus 50 I3 is equal to 0. Okay? So now we have three equations, three unknowns. We can solve them to get I1, I2, and I3. Usually we do it in order loop 1, loop 2, and loop 3. Here I did it in the opposite order, which confused me a little bit as well. So 3, 2, and 1. But loop number 3 is the most involved one. So this is why we started with it. Okay, you write the three equations. You solve them uh, using Gauss elimination, using, using method of determinants. Uh, using your calculator, using any, using substitution, using any any technique that you feel comf you know, feel comfortable with and visible, you can use to solve these um, these these three equations. I'm showing you here how to do it through Gauss Gauss elimination. So I wrote the matrix A. I put the matrix A here. This is the right hand side. You first make this one one by dividing this equation by minus five. And then you multiply this divide equation by minus 3 and you add to equation 2. You multiply this equation by minus 9 and add to equation 3. Okay? If you do that, I did it in fractional form. Uh, you end up with this matrix here and please verify these answers. This is minus 1 over 5. This is minus 7 over 5. This is 48 over 5. This is 26 over 5. This is 24 over 5. This is 38 over 5. Now you select the element 2 and 2 as your new pivot. You multiply this equation by 5 over 48, you obtain 1, as shown here. And then you multiply this equation by minus 24 over 5, and you add to equation 3. If you do that, you end up with uh, the last equation. We'll have only one unknown, which is I3. And the last equation now reads 25 over, th over 5. I3 is equal to 15 over 10. If you simplify this one, you get that I3 is equal to 3 over 10. This will cancel, this will give you 5, you divide by 3, become 3 over 10 or 0.3 ampere. And you can calculate all the other currents I1 and I2. I need only here I3, because I3 is the current drawn from the source, which is really the one we are looking for. But of course, you can back substitute here to get I2, and then you back substitute the first equation to get, to get I1. But here in this ex specific example, I need only I3, which is a current drawn from the source. Okay, let's take a look at the second example. We have here the shown circuit would like to find the power supplied by each volt to source. 
Uh, it's a circuit. We have to solve it. We have to find the current everywhere. There are many ways to collect, could select your loops. Um, I could select I, I could select my first loop as this one here, the external one, and my second loop is this internal one. Or I could select this internal one and this external one. Or I could select this internal one and this other one here. Okay, there are many ways of doing it. As long as you have, there is a current flowing in every branch, you are all set. And you can see here, if I have a current flowing in this loop, and I have a current flowing in this loop, then I cover the older branches. So here, the number of equations that you need is only two. You need only to solve for two loop currents. And this will be sufficient to give you the currents everywhere in the circuit. So, as you can see here, I took both currents to be in the counter clock in the, in the clockwise direction. So, I1 is flowing in the clockwise direction in this loop here. Okay. And I2 is flowing in the clockwise direction in this loop here. And then for each loop, we'll apply KVL. We'll obtain two equations in two unknowns. We solve for I1 and I2. Notice that the current flowing here in this one ohm resistor from left to right is I1 minus I2. Okay. And the current flowing in this resistance here from bottom to top is assumed to be I1. So the reference direction I1. The current flowing here is only 5. But remember, this is, a, this is a joint term here. So let's apply KVL. Let's go around this loop. Let's go around this loop and then apply KVL. So you have 200 minus 10 multiplying I1. There is only I1 here. And then you have this drop, positive, negative. So it's going to be minus 1 ohm multiplying I1 minus I2. This is negative, positive. This becomes plus 50. The loop closes equal to 0. So this is the equation of the first loop. Okay? Of course, you could have said that the total voltage around this loop is equal to the voltage drop. So you could say, you say um, I have 200 here and I have 50 here. It's going to be 250 on the right-hand side. And then the drops is 10 I1 plus 1 uh, multiplied by I1 minus I2. This will give you exactly the same thing. Uh, but I prefer, I prefer personally to do it through KVL. So if I go around this loop in the clockwise direction, I sum all the drops. Negative, positive, I count as positive. Positive, negative, I count as negative. Notice that, um, notice that the drop I have here across this one, I counted it as positive, negative because of the assumed direction of I1. And across I1, I'm going to uh, cross, cross the 10 ohm. And, I, and uh, so this one here is positive, negative, because I'm assuming I1 to flow from the bottom node to the top node. And here for I1, I gave it this polarity. And when I assume this polarity, I make an actual implicit assumption that I1 is higher than I2. So the drop here is equal to 1 ohm multiplying I1 minus I2. Don't, don't get confused about that. And if you continue, you get here plus 50. This is negative positive. So this is the equation. You take all the I terms to the, uh, to the other side. This 250 becomes 250. This is minus 10 I1. Minus I1 becomes 11 I1. It goes to the other side to become positive. This is positive I2. It goes to the other side to become negative. So this is my first equation. Now we write the second equation for loop number two. We go around in the clockwise direction. We sum all, we sum, a negative positive is counted as a positive, as a, as a positive voltage source, while positive negative is counted as a drop, okay? So we'll go around here, and uh, let's see how, how we're going to be doing it. So from here to here, I have minus 50, positive negative minus 50. Remember, I'm talking about the node of, the loop of I2. So I'm, I'm talking about, I will assume here that I2 is the dominant one. And this does not contradict what I did in the first example, for the, in the, sorry, in the first loop. So the first loop, I assume the current to be flowing this way. But I prefer in the second loop to talk about I2 as a, as a stronger current. So if, I, if the current I2 is dominant over I1, then the drop across the 1 ohm is positive negative. So the equation would be minus 50 minus 1 ohm multiplying I2 minus I1. This is I2 and this I1. So the drop is also positive negative. Here for the 5 ohm resistor, the drop must have this polarity. 
Why? Because you assume the I2 in the clockwise direction. So you go around in the loop, so this becomes minus 5 I2. You go around in the loop, this is negative positive plus 100 is equal to 0. So this is the equation that you have. This is negative, this is negative drop, minus I2 minus I1 multiplied by 1 on. This one is minus 5 I2, and this one is plus 100, okay? Again, you do what you did for the second loop, for the first loop, sorry. You, you sum 100 minus 50, you get 50. You move it, you keep it here, you move the other terms to the other side, uh, minus, minus, and you move to the other side, the coefficient of I1 becomes negative. This is minus I2, minus 5, I2 gives you minus 6, I2. You move to the other side, the 6, I2. And you see, I put them in order. So the first column is I1, second column is I2. In equation number 1, equation number 2. And if you have I3, you it must be the third column, okay? So now I have to solve these two equations. Uh, I solved them, I, I did it through elimination. So from this one, I was from equation number 2, I was able to write that I1 is 6, I2 minus 50. And then I took this 6, I2 minus 50 and substitute in equation 1. I removed the I1. So if you do that, you get 60, 66 I2 minus 550. This is from this term. Minus I2 here is equal to 250. So I substituted from here in equation 1 and I eliminated I1. You obtain only one equation in I2. So 66 I2 minus I2 will give you 65 I2. 550 plus 250 will give you 800. Then I2 is equal to 800 over 65, which is 12.307 amperes. Okay? And if you have I2, you go back to this equation again. You get I1, you multiply I2 by 6, you must subtract 50. You get 23.846 amperes. So what remains now is to calculate uh, the power supplied in the circuit and see how it's going to work. So I1 turned out to be positive and I2 turned out to be positive. So indeed the current flowing here in this branch is I1. So this is a source and the current flowing from the negative to the positive terminal in this direction from right to left. Then this source is supplying power and the power supplied is 200 I1. Okay, so 200 we calculate the I1, you get uh, 4.769 kilowatts. And of course, this is power supplied. I, I am not including the sign here. If I'm doing conservation of power, I will have to include this one as a, with a negative sign. But I'm not doing that. I know that this is power supplied. Okay? Now, let's talk about this 50 volts. This one here, the current flowing in this branch is uh, in, in this direction. Okay, so we have I1 flowing this way. We have I2 flowing this way. So the current in this branch from left to right is I1 minus I2. So the, the, the power supplied by this source is this 50 volts multiplying by the current flowing from left to right, from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And this current is I1 minus I2. So the power supplied by this, by this source here, which I call it BS2, is 50 I1 minus I2. Okay, I have already I1, I have I2. I calculate, the, I calculate this product, you get 576.955 watts. Now, the last source is this one here, and I2 is positive. So in this branch, I2 is flowing from left to right. Okay, so this source also supplies power from left to right, and uh, the power supplied is 100 multiplying I2. There is only I2 in this branch, while in this branch, we have I2 and I1. Okay, so this is 100 I2, you multiply by 12.307, you get 1.23 kilowatts. Now, if, after you solve the problem, you should do a check to make sure that your answer is correct. I suggest, I did already that check for myself, that you go around this loop and apply KVL to the external loop. This, this one you have not used in your calculations. In your calculations, you use this one and use this one. But you didn't use KVL, you didn't apply KVL to the external loop. I, I suggest that you take the answer that I gave you right now and apply key, verify KVL over the external loop. Go around, this will be 200 minus 10 ohm multiplying I1 minus 5 multiplying I2 plus 100 is equal to 0. Try to verify that. I did, I did make that check. 
You can also verify KCL at this node, you can verify KCL at this node. There are many ways you can check that your answer is correct and don't make a mistake. We have seen in the nodal method, in the node method or the nodal method, that um, the presence of voltage sources can cause complications. Here we have the dual, the dual situation. The presence of current sources can cause problems. If the current source is is an external is is not in between is not connected to two loops is not flowing in a branch that is common between two loops you are okay. You can use this current source to eliminate one equation, and this will result in less equations. And I will show you in the next video how if how if you have a current source that is flowing in a branch between two nodes something of that form so if you have this is a current source here okay but it's part of this loop and it's also part of this loop you end up with a problem why because you can't apply kvl in this loop why you don't can't apply kvl because you don't know what is a voltage drop across across a current source it depends on the rest of the circuit you can't apply kvl in this loop either because the current source is shared you have to talk about something called super loop okay which i'm going to be talking about in the next video not in this one but uh, for now i'll show you an example how a current source has a potential to reduce the number of equations okay so here we have a circuit it has an independent voltage source it has an independent current source and a number of resistors would like to find the power dissipated in the 10 ohm resistor so in this resistor here using loop analysis or it's called loop analysis or mesh analysis both of them are, is the same so we're gonna we have how many loops uh i can have this loop at number one this is number two if i if i stop here i do not cover this branch then i need three loops i need three loop currents to cover the whole circuit so this would be i1 this is i2 and this i3 and then we apply KVL to each loop. Okay, we apply KVL, and then we have three equations of three unknown. This ideal, this should be the case. Okay, so let's see how this is going to proceed and how the current source is going to help. So we can we re redraw the circuit. We we said we are going to solve for these three currents I1, I2, and I3. Now we notice that I3 is the current flowing in this branch here, but I3 is equal to the two ampere source. Because this current, this current source is forcing the current here to be 2 ampere. So I, this current source supplied for me one equation that I3 is equal to 2 ampere. So I don't have to apply KVL for this third loop. Notice that the current source is not shared between two loops. It is only inside loop number 3. And this is why it reduced the number of equations by 1. I have now to solve only for I1 and I2. And everywhere I have I3, I'm going to replace it by 2 ampere. So let's apply KVL here. I can simply say that the, 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 volt, the value of the voltage source is equal to the sum of the drops. Here you get 10 I1. So I can, I can draw this polarity because it's the assumed direction of I1. The drop here will be 10 I1. The drop here will be equal to 4 multiplying the current going from top to bottom. Okay, so if I assume this polarity for this drop, so this means there's going to be 4 I1 minus I2. Notice that I1 is flowing from top to bottom, while I2 is flowing from bottom to top. Okay, so the current here with this polarity, if I want to get, if I want to calculate this voltage drop here across the 4 ohm with this polarity, this is 4 I1 minus I2. Okay, so this is the equation 10 is equal to 10 I1 plus 4 I1 minus I2. This is my first equation. I can reorganize it. Collect all the terms of I1, you get 14. Collect all the terms of I2, you get minus 4, and this is 10. You divide by 2, you end up with this equation here. Okay? Now, you do this equation for the second loop. So what you do, you go around this loop here. Okay? And then you sum the drops. You say that the sum of all drops is equal to zero. Okay, and the, the way I write it here is that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna assume this singularity. I will assume that I2 is dominant in loop two. So if I2 is dominant in loop two, this means that the total current in this branch is flowing from top to bottom. Then the drop in this branch have actually this polarity, positive, negative. 
okay i don't want anyone to say you assumed it positive negative in the loop one now you are reversing the polarity it doesn't matter reversing the polarity will, will result in a negative sign in the equation but it will make writing the equation easier for you because you, you remember that you are given e e equation in loop number one it's i1 dominant in loop number two it's i2 it's assumed to be dominant so here this drop is for i2 minus i1 i2 is flowing from top from bottom to top while i1 is flowing from top to bottom so this is for i2 minus i1 the drop here is 20 i2 the drop here is 8 i2 minus i3 but we know what's i3 i3 is 2 ampere so this is this is the sum of all three drops and this will give me zero okay positive negative positive negative positive negative okay so i summed all three drops because there is no voltage source here this will add to zero so you can see i gave i2 always positive coefficient collect all the coefficients of i1 you get minus 4 i1 you have to everything in order this is 4 i2 20 i2 so 24 i2 plus 8 you get 32 i2 collect all the constants and move them to the other side i3 is equal to 2 if you multiply by 8 you get minus 16 you move it to the right hand side you get 16 so this is the equation i have now for the second loop i don't have to calculate for the third loop i already know what's i3 so you divide by 4 you get minus i1 plus 8 i2 is equal to 4 if you solve for i1 i2 i, I did do that I um, I did I use substitution. I wrote here I1 as 8I2 minus 4. And then I use this equation and then I substituted into this equation here. I was able to get the solution for I1 and I2 and I did verify that answer. I did verify it by, uh, by doing KVL uh, around this loop here, which is a loop I have not used in my solution. Okay. Or I could use KCL at this node. Whatever, whatever approach you want to use. There are number of ways check that your answer is correct. The last step in my solution is to find the power dissipate in the 10 ohm resistor. I know what's I1. I already calculated that. It's 0.889. So I multiply 0.889 squared multiplied by 10. You end by 7.914 watts. And of course, as I said, there are many ways to check your answer. You can apply KVL around this loop. You can apply KCL at this node, KCL at this node, and so on. So you can, there are many ways to check that the answers that you got are correct and not make any mistake.